political men's rights movement. All of these other movements were able to either directly or indirectly capitalise on the political power inherent to women. They were able to piggyback off the social thermite of women's issues to parlay their own agendas into actionable political change. Black activists sided with women, perhaps even unknowingly, to achieve the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Gay activists siding with women against the evil straight man who's keeping them down. Now, I know I have some black and gay subscribers, so before you all go jumping into the comment section to tell me what an unbelievable asshole I am, my point here is not to deny the legitimacy of those civil rights movements, but simply point out that the success of those identitarian movements didn't happen in a frictionless political vacuum. Certain alliances and certain compromises were made in aid of progressing those political agendas. Certain alliances and compromises that a men's rights movement cannot make. They cannot do the same thing as the gay or black rights movements. A struggle for men's rights resulting in true gender equality is by its very nature fundamentally oppositional to the disproportionate rights, benefits and exemptions that society has extended to the female gender. Even more so than the previous example of trans people, men's rights are the enemy of women's interests. I'm often mischaracterised as being against men's rights, and that just isn't the case. Male circumcision, family courts, common law marriage, the Duluth model, they're all fucked, and I honestly do wish MRAs all the best. The problem is that if wishes were fishes, then nobody would ever go hungry. If we look at what MRAs are trying to achieve and what they're up against in pure, pragmatic terms, I just don't see an avenue for success, given everything we've explored about identitarian political movements and the root of female political power. You see, even the status of damn near political omnipotence that we ascribe to feminism has its limits. By all accounts, the ERA was perfectly aligned with the publicly stated goals of political feminism, that being total gender equality. It was not aligned, however, with the interests of actual women. As a result, not only was the ERA shot down in spectacular fashion, but it was shot down by other women, led by traditional conservative women's activist Phyllis Schlafly. Uh, we find, as we look into the matter, that ERA won't give women anything which they haven't already got or have a way of getting. But on the other hand, it will take away from women some of the most important rights and benefits and exemptions we now have. What would be an example of that? Well, a great glaring example on which there is full agreement between both the proponents and the opponents is the matter of the draft. Women are exempt from the draft. Selective service says only young men of age 18 have to register. But the Equal Rights Amendment will positively make women subject to the draft and on an equal basis with men. Barbarossa has mentioned Schlafly on a number of occasions, including his excellent video, The Great Gynocentrisms of Our Time, where he uses the previous clip from the firing line with William F. Buckley to begin an exploration into the similarities between traditional conservatism and feminism. Now, I think calling out traditionalism for the underhanded shit sandwich that it actually is, is perfectly reasonable. However, I think there is a far deeper subtext to this issue, which is largely being overlooked. When you think about it, what the men's rights movement is aiming for is actually something quite similar to the Equal Rights Amendment. The problem is that such a position of absolute equal rights between the genders is by definition diametrically opposed to the unfair benefits that women currently have. And as we see with the ERA's failure to launch, even the political juggernaut of feminism itself comes to a grinding halt the second its high-minded ideological goals stray too far from the interests of everyday women. Actually think about it for a second. Do you really expect a nominal men's rights movement, regularly mocked by the mainstream media and labelled a hate group by numerous civil rights organisations, to actually succeed? where even the juggernaut of gender politics itself 
almighty feminism failed in spectacular fashion to achieve the exact same political outcome of total gender equality. It really doesn't matter whether you're the Justice for Men and Boys Party absolutely floundering in the UK general election or you're the fucking National Organisation for Women, one of the most powerful feminist organisations in the world who were trying to push an equal rights amendment which would have ultimately seen women subject to the draft. You know, men's rights are human rights. True gender equality. Feminism is a hate movement. When all is said and done... We are essentially talking about trying to pit empty political slogans against the innate reproductive machinery of an entire species. You cannot go against the broad interests of everyday women and win. There is no avenue of political power to achieve that particular goal. This is really where we get to the bottom of what this 